Where are all the trees? We spend a lot of time on a park by park basis and literally this year, Jeff, we went back seven years on every park we own. We said, what ride did we add? What did we, what did we believe was the impact of that ride? And then where are the gaps? Do I need to add family rides? Do I need to add thrill? Do I need to add water? Should I be doing something else? And so every park now has a gap analysis as to what product we want to add and a at what cadence. So I can, I already know, Rob Decker already knows what we're going to be doing for, for 2014 and even 2015 for the most part and you just have to stay a little flexible too. You know our relationship with the manufacturers is pretty solid and with B&M it's, it's you know especially so so it's very casual. Um, I will call up Walter Bollinger and say hey we're thinking about this you know let's talk more about you know what the coasters you've represented in the past but tell me what's new. We actually met at IAPA and we made this deal on the floor at our national convention and I, we went to them and we said, we need something, we need something strong, we know what's in the portfolio, what's next, what's in development. And so we started that dialogue then, and at that moment, I was with a few other Cedar Fair guys and said, boys, well, I wanted to put something in the front gate. And they're looking at me like, the front gate? I said, yeah, if we can do a flyover, and Walter says, and we can do a barrel roll, or a 360, or something like that, or a zero G roll, and I said, that's it. That's the concept. If we can start it at the lake and clear that out and open that up and get some open space and really get that corner of the park, you know, populated with people that are excited to be at Cedar Point and celebrate that moment over the front gate, that's the, con that's the coaster concept right there. So it just took, it took a little bit of dialogue and then at the right moment it just all came together and we were done. At that point we're on, we're on our way. You know, for me, because I'm new to the regional park industry, even though I've been in the industry a long time, um, it's very helpful. You know, uh, both two standpoints. One is relationship, right? So there's a lot of people I don't get to see very much uh, from the other organizations and from the ride manufacturers that I only get to see at IAPA. So that's helpful. And, and it always sparks ideas, right? So this may not be right for me, but maybe I can tweak it this way. And, uh, you know, we're going to do some work as an example on our, uh, on our fountains that are at the... the the King's Parks, Canada Wonderland we're going to start with, that the idea of what we're going to do really came out of uh, IAPA. I walked in here and I was like a little kid. I, you know, the first reaction was wow. And there was two reasons for that. One is these guys do quality work, you know, and, and I'm really proud of the work they get to do and the fact that we get to be part of it. But the other part, as you saw, is we walked in directly into the keyhole, uh, the first keyhole for Gatekeeper. And you know what? It, I, there are days when the business is, this job is a difficult job. This was not one of those days. The name of a coaster is always interesting. So, I mean, everyone gets their input, you know, within our organization, and sometimes we go outside of the organization. Even the pizza delivery guy comes in and says, I think it should be X. Um, but oftentimes it comes out of marketing, and it's, you know, it's that identity. You have to capture the imagination of people, 
and the identity has to be strong. It goes into my shop and then we create you know, the visuals for it to reinforce it. But I'm, I'm a womb to tomb guy. Whatever we call it in the beginning and we develop that imagery for, it's gotta be there in the end. So we get out, we're proud of our park, we're bragging, you know, we've got the marketing em- engine going and all of that. And I just want people when they come into the park to say, yeah, I remember that when they first announced it. And now I'm on it. And this is what it is. And then they're going to tell their friends. I just think it's a real solid relationship of, of how the creative team it comes from everyone. But then it's our job really to just reinforce it, drive it home and execute. But a lot of people say, what's next? And how are you gonna fit it into the park? And I always joke around, I say, you know, I, I blame my predecessor. He filled up the park and then he hired me and he retired. So he's sunning, he's sunning on the beaches of Florida and laughing. Uh, but no, he had the same challenges then too. So you have to evolve. And Dragster, we moved, you know, two or three rides to even get Dragster onto, onto the peninsula. But I think that sometimes when you have a lot of constraints, the creativity scale goes much higher. If you just have a blank page and say, you can do whatever you want, you can build whatever you want. There's no limitation on dollars, budget, height, whatever. I, you know, that, that blank page kind of scares me. But knowing the park, how it performs, where people are occupying their time, what their tastes and desires are, all of those are parameters that lead me to the solution faster. And I think for, for Gatekeeper, what is going to be different for us is, I did hear from a lot of people saying, Cedar Point's such a beautiful place wide open to the lake, you have a wonderful beach, but when I'm in the park, I don't get a sense of any of that. And so that sort of led us down the, the road of Windseeker, just opened it up a little bit, and now Gatekeeper, Disaster Transport. So, you know, I, I'm gonna miss that ride too, but it had its time, and now we evolve, and we go on to Gatekeeper. And I think when you approach Gatekeeper, you're gonna appreciate the horizon of the lake, the beauty of the peninsula, and then a terrific ride. I give luminosity an A, but I want it to be an A+. And so uh, we're doing some changes. It was a difficult show to perform on a seven-day basis, and I think you're going to see us modify that. Maybe we'll go to one day down a week just to give give them vocal rest, if nothing else. And then uh, we're going to produce it in-house this year. So I think we now have the time, we have the talent uh, to produce it in-house. Uh, and I think that'll also make for a tighter show. But I got to tell you, the number of letters and responses we got to just have something besides just a roller coaster was really positive. A uh, bridge to Knott's in California. One of the things that, that we've done clearly there is bring back what we call tr- streetmosphere. 
you know, you need the cowboys on the streets. You need them interacting with the guests, et cetera. We took, we took a great band out of uh, Disney's California Adventure they didn't want anymore, and they're now at Knott's. They're the resident uh, guys at Knott's, and we're getting great feedback on them. You, it's a balance, right? Um, you want to have uh, the right performers who are interacting with the guests, and it has to be fun. It can't be too staged. And so I, I like it. I don't know that we'll rush back into it, but you're going to see some ads.